Prim's algorithm finds a minimum spanning tree in a connected weighted graph. Recall that a tree is a connected graph with no cycles. A spanning tree of, say, a graph G is a subgraph of G that is a tree and that contains all vertices of G. So for Prim's algorithm, we specify that the graph has to be connected because only connected graphs have spanning trees and the graph has to be weighted as well. Its edges have assigned weights or costs because it is the weight of the spanning tree that we are minimizing. So every connected graph has a spanning tree. Oftentimes they may have multiple spanning trees. We use Prim's algorithm to find a spanning tree of minimum weight. We'll go over how Prim's algorithm works, how it finds this minimum spanning tree, and we'll see a couple of examples applying Prim's algorithm to a couple graphs to find minimum spanning trees. I have to remind you that I'm a mathematician, not a computer scientist, so some aspects of Prim's algorithm that you may be interested in from a computer science perspective, I will not be covering. If you would like to see me cover this more from a computer science perspective, the best I can say is to let me know and share the video, and if a lot of people express interest in that, then it may be worthwhile for me to take the time, do the research, and prepare such a video. But like I said, we're just going to go over how it works, so if you know how to program, you should be able to program this algorithm after watching this video. And in a future video, we're going to go over what I think is the good stuff, which is the proof of why this algorithm works. Let's get into the algorithm. Let G be a connected weighted graph of order N. That means that G has N vertices. We specify that because a spanning tree of G will have one less edge than G has vertices. So once we have N minus one edges, when we're constructing our spanning tree, we'll know that we can stop. So Prim's algorithm finds a minimum spanning tree of G that we can call T in the following manner. We begin at an arbitrary vertex, say, V of G. Since we're creating a spanning tree, by definition, every vertex of G will be in our spanning tree. So this algorithm is going to pick out the edges that are going to minimize the total weight or cost. After we have picked an arbitrary vertex V of our graph, step two is to select an edge of minimum weight that is incident with our vertex V. So this will be the first edge of our spanning tree T. Then step three, we select an edge of minimum weight that has exactly one of its vertices incident with an edge that we have already selected. This means that the edge has to be sharing a vertex with an edge already in our spanning tree. This is going to make sure that we keep our tree connected. But it can't just share a vertex with edges we've already selected. It has to share exactly one vertex with edges we've already selected. This ensures that with each step we include a new vertex, and it also ensures that we don't create any cycles. So if we've selected two edges that look something like that, Prim's algorithm might then give us an edge like that that shares one vertex with an already selected edge, but it's not going to give us an edge like that that shares two end vertices with edges we've already selected. Doing something like that would create a cycle, and a tree can't have a cycle. Finally, step four is to just repeat step three, continuing to select edges of minimum weight that have exactly one vertex in common with an edge already selected. We keep doing that until n minus one edges have been selected. At that point, we can stop and we're guaranteed to have a minimum spanning tree. Beautiful, let's see it in action. Here's an example graph that we'll use Prim's algorithm on. Notice that it is both connected and weighted. Each edge has an assigned weight in green right next to the edge. I've pasted the steps of the algorithm here for our convenience, and I've got a copy of the vertices of our graph here on the right. 
So we'll carry out the algorithm on this graph, and then on the right, we can include the edges that our algorithm instructs, whatever those might look like. All right, step one is to begin at an arbitrary vertex V of G. So we can pick any vertex of this graph that we want to start on. Let's go ahead and pick V, and that's as good as any. And remember, on the right, we already have all the vertices of the graph in our spanning tree. That's no mystery. By definition, the spanning tree has to have every vertex of the graph. The algorithm is used to select edges that will minimize the total weight. Step two is to select an edge of minimum weight incident with V. So we consider the edges incident with our vertex V. Those are these four edges that I have highlighted. We select the one of minimum weight to include in our spanning tree. The weights are five, seven, three, and one. So clearly we select this edge of weight one joining V with U. I've highlighted the edge and included it in our spanning tree. Step three is to select an edge of minimum weight having exactly one of its vertices incident with an edge that we've already selected. There are six edges that have a vertex incident with exactly one edge that we've already selected. I've highlighted those six edges now. Three of them share the vertex U with this edge that we just selected, and three of them share the vertex V with this edge that we just selected. Among these six edges, we want to pick the one of minimum weight. We've got weights of five, four, four, five, seven, and three, so this edge of weight three joining V and W is selected. Now we just repeat step three until n minus one edges have been selected. In this case, the order of our graph n, the number of vertices that it has, is five. So n minus one is five minus one, which is four. So we'll go until we've selected four edges. Again, we need to select an edge of minimum weight having exactly one of its vertices incident with an edge already selected. I have highlighted all such edges. We need to select the one of minimum weight. Notice that this edge here is not eligible because it shares vertices with two edges we've already selected. It shares U with this edge, and it shares W with this edge. Among the eligible edges, the one of minimum weight is this one here with weight four, joining U and X, so we select that edge. Again, we repeat step three, and in yellow, I've highlighted the eligible edges. We pick the edge of minimum weight, which is this one here, weight two, joining X and Y. Again, take a moment to notice these edges that are not eligible because they share two vertices with edges that we've already selected. And now we know we can stop because we have chosen n minus one or four edges for our spanning tree. And just by looking at it, we can tell that it is a spanning tree. It is a connected subgraph of the original graph that contains all vertices from the original graph and it has no cycles. If we call this spanning tree T, then W, the weight of T, is 10. That's the sum of the weights of the edges, two plus four plus one plus three. Since we used Prim's algorithm to find the spanning tree, we know that it is a minimum spanning tree. It is impossible to get a spanning tree of this graph with a lower weight. It may be possible to get a different spanning tree with the same weight because minimum spanning trees aren't unique, but we can't get a spanning tree with less than 10 weight. So that's how Prim's algorithm works. I think you'll agree it's pretty straightforward and pretty slick. Let's give it one more try with another graph. Here is our graph. Here is a copy of the vertices where we can construct our spanning tree. I'm not even going to put the instructions on screen. It's so straightforward, I'm sure we can do it from memory. First, we just pick an arbitrary vertex to start at. Let's say we start at the vertex Z. Then among all edges incident with the starting vertex Z, we pick the one of minimum weight. In this case, that's this edge of weight two joining Z and V. Now we're into step three, the step that we repeat until we are done. We select an edge of minimum weight that shares exactly one vertex with the edges we've already selected. In this case, that edge of minimum weight is this one with weight one joining U and V. 
And now we repeat step three again. We want to consider all of the edges that share exactly one vertex with the edges we've already selected. Those are those three edges there. Notice we can't consider this edge because it shares a vertex with two edges we've already selected. If we were to include this edge, we would then have a cycle. Among the three edges we can choose, the one of minimum weight is this one with weight four joining V and W. Take a moment to notice that the order of our graph is six. It has six vertices, so we need to select six minus one or five edges. We've selected three edges so far. Let me draw that third edge we selected in our spanning tree. So we've got two more selections to make. I've highlighted the edges that share exactly one vertex with edges we've already selected. The minimum weight edge of these three is this one here with weight six joining W and Y. Repeating step three one more time, the only two possible edges to include are this one and this one. The one of minimum weight, of course, is the one with weight eight joining W and X, and we have completed Prim's algorithm to find this minimum spanning tree. So if we call this minimum spanning tree T, its weight is equal to 21. Again, that's just the sum of the weights of the edges in the tree. If we were to run this algorithm again, starting at any vertex of this graph, we will always get a spanning tree with weight 21. And that, my friends, is how to use Prim's algorithm to find a minimum spanning tree in a connected weighted graph. Ghost in the